Chapter 16 of Almost Super. I don't think that's even correct grammar. Come on, Rodney. Tell me what you found, I said. Can't stop in a groove. Rodney stopped typing long enough to drain a glass of goat's milk, then started up again. I sat next to my brother watching him work. He was sitting in front of four monitors, each streaming information that made no sense to me. He loved a challenge and had started doing research yesterday as soon as I'd, as soon as I'd asked him. I flipped through a stack of papers in front of me. One of them was an email from Oscar, Oscar Redding to our family. Just like the one he'd sent to the Johnsons, like Benny said. It made sense. We destroyed his factory during one of our battles, so he wanted to get the families to stop fighting. From what I could tell, Oscar worked with the Johnsons until they agreed they'd to meet with our family. Then Oscar had contacted Grandpa. Grandpa has discussed it with the family and said we were willing to talk, but Oscar never wrote back. He worked so hard to get the families to meet, and then for some reason he just dropped the whole issue. I wanted to find out everything I could about this man, but so far my research had been turning up dead ends. That's when I remembered the citizen who Juanita had called her family in the first place. Where did that citizen get the information anyway? And what about the citizen who had called us? I asked Rodney if he, Rodney if he could track the phone number, and Rodney boot boasted. He, he'd have it for me in less than five minutes. That was 45 minutes ago. He was still looking. My brother stopped typing, but it was only to push his glasses further up his nose. He scowled at the screen. Oh, you think a triple cross translastic relay pattern is going to stop me? Rodney said to his computer. Well, that child's play, my friend. Do you hear me? Child's play. He started typing again. Do you think you'll be able to find it? I asked. Rodney stopped and looked over his glasses at me. Please, Rafter. It's me you're talking to. He went back to work. He went back to work. A speaker on the desk crackled to life. Rodney, Rafter's Rafter, it's dinner time. Come and get it while it's cold. That was Mom's little joke. It seemed like every other night we had cold mashed potatoes and ch chard for dinner. Another superhero diet staple. I pressed a button on the speaker. We'll be right up, Mom. Rodney tapped the return key and he stared at the screen. And there we have it. He pointed at the monitor. October J. That's who owns the phone that called in the robbery on the white night, Rodney said. October Johnson. You know what this means, right, Rafter? I had no idea what it meant. You have cracked the problem that has been plaguing us for years. What problem is that? I didn't feel like I'd cracked anything. The Johnsons usually only send four people to the battles, Rodney said. We usually have six to eight, and yet they still manage to win half the time. He tapped the screen. This is why. I still don't get it, I admitted. The J doesn't have to stand for Johnson. Maybe it stands for something else. Rodney ignored me. They know where the battles are going to be ahead of time. It's like having home court advantage. They decide where they want to fight and then they call us up and we go running. That's why we struggle even though we have more people. I wasn't convinced. Maybe? Rodney flicked the power switch and headed upstairs. I followed. I stopped on the third stair from the top. If Rodney was right, then that meant Juanita had been. Not about everything. I really did believe she had a worthless power now, but maybe she wasn't giving us the whole truth. But once again, I felt the nagging sensation that I was missing something. A key piece of information. Tactics. Something tickled the back of my brain. Why did Oscar Redding stop trying to re- Kyle the families. That seemed to be crucial. If I could just figure out that piece of the if I could just figure that piece of the puzzle out, I was convinced the rest would fall into place. Mom, Rodney and Benny were already at the table. Dad brought over bowls of cold mashed potatoes and chard and lime wedges. I dished up food and pushed it around on my plate. Why do we have to eat this stuff again? I asked. Superheroes have always eaten this food, sweetie, Mom said. It gives us energy to fight the Johnsons. She shook her fist. A week ago, I might not have accepted that answer. Benny and I don't get, into f don't get to fight the Johnsons. We get to work in the mo motor pool. I think we should get to eat bu burgers and french fries. Dad changed the subject. How is your first day of training, Dad asked, dumping mashed potatoes on his plate. Training's fine, Benny said. What's Dirk you got studying? Flamethrowers, the modified 1942 army jeep, or what about the grappling hook on the hovercraft? When you hook that baby up to a helicopter, all sorts of fun stuff happens. Glove compartments, Benny said. Glove compartments, Dad asked. Glove compartments, Benny replied. Dad looked puzzled. Really, that doesn't seem like the most exciting place to start. I mean, 
I guess the glove compartment is important if you're not quite sure where to store your gloves, but you boys know where to store gloves, right? Feel free to bring the matter up with Dirk, I said. I'd be more than happy to start with something more exciting. Oh no, Dad said, shaking his head. Dirk knows his machines. If he started you on the glove compartment, then this would be the best place to start. Did you know, Benny said, that the T9 reinforced glove compartment, one properly secu secured, can contain an explosion of just of up to 2.7 sticks of dynamite without hurting the rest of the car? Benny had really been studying the bu that book. That's interesting, Dad said, although it was clear from his tone that he didn't think it was. The only thing I don't get, Benny said, is that I don't think you'd often have 2.7 sticks of dynamite lit at the same time. It seemed like you'd either have two sticks or three sticks, but not 2.7. I guess if you have three sticks, you could always cut off part one of the sticks and then before you put it in the glove compartment. But but then again, if the sticks were already lit, it, it, I'd just drop them and run. I don't think cutting up dynamite is such a good idea. Little brother, Rodney said, you've succeeded in making this one the most boring dinner conversation of all time. Benny wasn't through. What did you think would happen if you put three sticks in the glove compartment? Would it completely destroy the car or would it just or would it just do point three sticks worth of damage? Well, I suppose it would. Dad clearly had no interest in glove compartments. I guess if you had some really good scissors, you could cut the dynamite, Benny said, but scissors aren't standard on the utility belts. I guess you could bite the dynamite, but if dynamite went off where you were biting, it'd have to have explained the dentist. You'd have to explain that to the dentist. The dentist? For some reason, my mind seized on what word like was important. Suddenly, I felt vibration in my pocket. At the same time, I heard a buzz from across the table. and two chimes, it's chicken and cluck. All at once, everybody was reaching into their pockets. I dug out my phone and read the message on the screen. Who will be left to save the day when the heroes are gone? With love, the Johnsons. What is this nonsense, Dad said. I don't think that's even correct grammar. Shouldn't it be whom? I rubbed my ears. Can anybody else hear that humming, I asked. An electronic squealing noise filled the air. It came from outside, and it was getting higher and higher in pitch. I don't hear anything, Dad said. Neither did Mom, but Benny and Rodney both did. I stood and moved to the window. The noise was getting painful. From where I stood, I could see the lights of downtown, the sprawling suburbs and the flash. At first it was a pinprick, almost like a single star close in the horizon. And then the lightning flared into the sky, not from the sky, into the sky. The lightning came from the pinprick of light. East of downtown, the night erupted into bright white light.